In the last class, we had done physical change. Today, we will be discussing about chemical change. So, let's start with some examples. The first example is burning. Burning of anything, whether you burn paper, whether you burn a ribbon, whether you burn wood, coal, plastic, anything. Burning is a chemical change. Now, what are the characteristics of a chemical change? In our last class, we have discussed that in a physical change, no new substance is formed. That means we do not get a new substance. But in a chemical change, it's just the opposite. We get a new substance. So when you burn it in anything, what happens? That substance changes into a new substance, that is ash. When you burn paper, it changes into ash. When you burn coal, it changes into ash. When you burn plastic, anything, it changes into ash. Along with that, what happens? A gas smoke comes out, isn't it? Uh, the smoke contains actually carbon dioxide and water vapor. So, which are completely a new substance. So, you were burning something, but what did you get? You got ash, you got carbon dioxide, you got water vapor. So, during burning, new substances are formed. So, it is a chemical change. Now, besides the formation of new substances, you will also see that ash, carbon dioxide and water vapor formed during burning have a different chemical composition than the substance that you had taken. Suppose you are burning paper. Paper is made up of something else. Its chemical composition is something else but ash, carbon dioxide and water vapor have a different chemical composition. So, in a chemical change, number one, a new substance is formed. Number two, there is change in the chemical composition. Now, can you get back a paper from ash? Can you get back a paper from water vapor and carbon dioxide that was produced during burning? No, that means it is irreversible. Chemical change is always irreversible. Once you get a new substance, you cannot get back the original substance. Now, when the next characteristic, when you are burning, what happens? What is being produced? Heat and light. So, during chemical change, energy is produced in the form of heat or light. Sometimes we do not see the heat or I mean say we do not feel the heat but heat is always produced. So in a chemical change always heat and light are produced. The next example is cooking her food. In the last class we had done chopping of vegetables is a physical change because no new substance is formed. The raw vegetable remains raw. Only the shape and size of the vegetable changes. But once you cook it, what happens is we get a completely new substance. The raw food or the raw vegetable has changed into a cooked one. That means the chemical composition of that entire food has changed. So when it changes from raw to a cooked food, the chemical composition changes. That means now it is a completely new substance. And can you get back the raw vegetable from the cooked vegetable? We cannot. It is irreversible. And when we cook food, energy in the form energy in the form of heat is produced. Hence, cooking of food is a chemical change. The next example is spoilage of food. You must have noticed that uh, mostly in cooked food, if you keep it outside for a long time, it produces a very strong smell and you cannot eat it. In uncooked food also, sometimes you will see a whitish fungus, fungus growing on the food. And even in bread, if you bring bread and it is stale and you have kept it in the house for a very long time, many bluish and whitish fungus starts growing on it. Now what happens is when bacteria and fungus feed on food, they produce many chemicals or many chemicals are released due to which that strong smell has uh, pr is produced from the food. That means a new substance has been 
formed. So when any new substance is being formed, it is a chemical change. As a new substance is being formed, the chemical composition of the new substance or the spoiled food is completely different from the food which was not spoiled. Okay. Next, it is irreversible. You cannot get back the unspoiled food from the spoiled food, isn't it? So it is irreversible. And when the fungus and bacteria feed upon the food, along with chemicals, a, huge, a large amount of heat energy is also produced. Hence, it is a chemical change. The next example of, is changing of milk into curd. Now, we all love, I think we all love to eat curd. Okay, now we get the curd from milk, but they are two different substances. Okay, so what happens is your mother or you, anyone, when they are making curd, they take milk and then they'll add some lemon or something to it and then keep it in a tight airtight container and in a few hours or at the next day you will see that the milk has changed into curd. Curd is a new substance which we got from milk. Okay what happens is in the milk bacteria is produced and this bacteria helps in converting milk into curd which is a completely new substance. When a new substance is formed what happens? The chemical composition changes next it is irreversible can you get back milk from curd we cannot we can make milk into curd but we cannot get uh, convert curd into milk so the reaction is irreversible and when milk is changing into curd uh, energy in the form of heat is produced hence it is a chemical change always remember in a chemical change a new substance is formed next example is rusting of iron now what is the actual color of iron it is silver gray but when you keep it outside for a very long time you must have noticed that it changes into a reddish brown color the reddish brown color is actually due to the formation of rust that coating is called rust okay now what is rust when iron reacts with oxygen and water vapor or water in the atmosphere it converts or it changes into a completely different substance which is known as rust it is a chemical change because number one, a new substance is being formed from iron. What is being formed? Rust is being formed. Number two, whenever a new substance is formed, there is a change in the chemical composition. Number three, it is irreversible. Once iron gets rusted, we cannot get back the original iron. The last one, when iron is converting into rust or when iron reacts with oxygen and water to form rust, a huge amount of heat energy is produced. Hence, rusting of iron is a chemical change. So, from these examples, we conclude that always in a chemical change, a new substance or new substances are formed. There is a change in the chemical composition. A chemical change is always irreversible. And during a chemical change, energy in the form of heat or light is produced. So, let's discuss about the differences between a physical and a chemical change. We know that in a physical change, no new substance is formed, no substance, no new product or substance is formed. But in a chemical change, a new substance or substances are formed. Physical change, usually it is reversible. That means you will get back the original substance. 
whereas in a chemical change it is always irreversible we cannot or we can never get back the original substance from the new substance in a physical change since no new substance is being formed there is no change in the chemical composition whereas in a chemical change since new substance is formed there will be a change in the chemical composition in a physical change no energy is being produced since no new substance is being formed no energy is produced whereas in a chemical change since new substance or substances are formed there is always a production of energy in the form of heat or light thank you